For 30 years, nine ball players from around the globe have made their way to the beautiful city of Chesapeake, Virginia, all with the dream of becoming U.S. Open nine ball champions. The list of former champions reads like a who's who of professional pools. Who will it be this year? Brought to you by Chalk Off, the official table cleaner of professional pool. The Spider, using laser technology to improve your game. And Q-Tech Cues, serious cues for serious players. You're watching the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship on Billiard Club Network. A high-profile match here, coming to you from the Q-Tech Q Arena. Samco from the Philippines, and along with my good friend Jimmy White, we will be bringing this match to you. So this is going to be a great match, Danny. I'll tell you, I, uh, I've seen a little bit of Camco on the Asian Tour, and he is a terrific player. Actually came through Canada a few years ago a few money matches up north of the border and he has won the lag and will kick things off here it's a race to 11. well he didn't make a ball in the break and, and that's interesting because every match there seems to be some kind of bias on the break but as uh, this break nothing went and uh, i'd like to say something about uh Evgeny because you know, when he first started, he wasn't a great player. He is right now, but if you notice things, he has that same long stroke as most of the Filipino players. And the reason for that is he was smart enough to take a trip to the Philippines and get some knowledge from them. Great shot to open up there, too. He's got that long, fluid action, as you said. Very adept at playing one pocket. I remember watching him in Cardiff at the World Championships. He was actually playing Efren Reyes, some one pocket. Had a bigger crowd around that table than they did around the feature table. Well, you know, I always wondered how the Filipinos got such great knowledge. And uh, now, you know, Afghani uh, comes from uh, Russia where it's not a great pool country. And he didn't have any real master to learn from. But he sure picked it up whatever way he did it. Well, you see Kiamko there. He just tried to flick that one off that top cushion. It's ball in hand for Stalov. So the first advantage falls to Evgeny. It's nice to start with ball in hand. And you bet what a great way to settle the nerves and get that back arm moving. You're guaranteed not to miss the first shot. Put the two up towards the pocket. Not too close because he doesn't want to leave an easy hit. And well, certainly the chance of pocketing the two. I like to mention all the time, whenever you shoot a shot like this to snooker a person, you have a better advantage the closer you are stuck to that snookered ball, you know, because you take away a whole bunch of the table, the kicking area. But I don't know exactly how it's laying. Uh, is it possible? Now, the nine's not kicking in the side pocket. And like I say, whenever whenever you have to hit a rail first to hit a ball, it's called a kick. In this case, he can hit the two straight on. But what can he play, Jimmy? Yeah, I, I think he'd be a better judgment to play a safe. He's very aggressive, though. What I've seen of Stalov in Europe and in the World Championships, I'll tell you, when he gets a look in to try and win a rack, he doesn't mess around. Well, that has a lot to do with youth. And like I say, he's from Moscow, and, and whenever a guy banks the ball, I like to say he's from Kentucky. Of course, he's not from Kentucky, but he still banked that one straight and true. Yeah, he'll wish that he would have yeah, missed it. <laughs> just, you know, struck yeah. it a little harder, though. Yeah, he snookered himself. He shot a shot where he didn't uh, gain anything making it. In fact, he's at a disadvantage must hit this ball because anything is better than ball in hand. Well, he hit it light. He hit it lightly and that meant he was trying to finesse it and play a kick safe and it didn't succeed. No, he's given the chance to Kiamko and even with the first mistake from Warren, it is he. It looks like he's got the best opportunity to take the opening rack. 
And as you'd expect from a Filipino star, he's going to have all the weapons in his arsenal. Well, there's been a long line of Filipino players come to this country. In fact, I love the way uh, Scott Smith announces them. Well, like, uh, the first one to come here was Jose Perica, and he announces Perica as the leader of the invasion. And they sure have invaded our game, and I say our game because it was very popular in this country first, but the Filipinos have really taken over. You know something, Danny, that's an interesting point. I, I think the Americans were dominant you know, 10, 15 years ago in this game. They passed the baton to the Philippines, and now I think the baton has been passed to the Taiwanese stars. We've got a 16-year-old world champion from Chinese Taipei, and would you believe the gold medalist in the World Games? 25-year-old Chinese Taipei star. It's so. amazing how, how, uh, how they really, really improved in not that long a period of time. In fact, you know, I was talking to uh, one of the French players, Vincent Fouquet, and I mentioned the world title years ago. He said, yeah, but there was only Americans in it. We can't say that anymore because they're legitimate world titles now with 25 countries that are represented here. So this is really gonna be a test. Yeah, this is the biggest and strongest field in any US Open I've seen. The first nine at Warren Kiamko's mercy here in the opening rack. And Warren secures it, 1-0. He leads Evgeny Stalov in the race to 11. And it's Warren Kiamko to break in rack two, having secured the opening one. Very tough match to call. I said at the outset that the local experts had this one at Pickham, and for good reason. And a no-no. You know, he didn't get a bad roll where he broke him and something kicked the ball in. He just went directly in the side off the head ball. That is a no-no. You gotta have better control than that because you don't want players of this caliber to start with ball in hand because you're generally done for this particular rack, especially the way they open. Yeah, if Kenny was looking at a possible 2-9 there, certainly the run-out doesn't look too difficult. But neither does the camera. Neither does the 2-9. So we're going to know exactly what his plan of attack is as soon as he floats this one in. If he brings the cue ball to the center of the table, he's going to run out. He could float the cue ball to that cushion and play the 2-9 combination. Just personal preference. Looks like it's going to be the two-nine combination. Right. You know, when I was playing, I would I would consider how I'm playing, and if I in the beginning of the match, especially if I needed to get in rhythm, the way they're sitting, running the balls may be better for your stroke. But in this case, he wanted to get on the scoreboard as quickly as possible. And Stalev secures rack number two and squares things up here. He'll have the break in number three. It's one-one against Warren Kiamko. Get the chalk off with the new and improved pool table cleaner. Just spray it out over the table and wipe it clean with the handy microfiber wiper and your pool table is cleaner than new. Get the chalk off with this professional pool table cleaner. You get free shipping when you call us toll free 866-774-8770 or visit us online at pooltablecleaner.com. Get the chalk off today. his break for the first occasion here. Q-Tech Q Arena. Swings that back arm. Powerful break. And he did make a ball. Don't know whether or not there's room for that one to go past into the corner pocket, past that one color though. I would guess no. From the little uh, view I just got at the monitor, I don't know if it really passes. It certainly doesn't have a full pocket if it does pass. And you need a full pocket to you know, get proper position. Let's see what he does. Looks like he's aiming to shoot it right in. Maple by the ball. He 
definitely does. Yeah, that camera angle was deceptive, Danny, because I didn't think it went either. No problem, you never even considered something else. Okay. Danny, I was going to say, a key shot coming here, though, from the two to the three. Off the top cushion as we look. Back down just the other side, play the three into the center. Or his choice, really, side pocket or bottom left as we look. I think it's going to be bottom left, little doubt. And actually, that was like the only ball to really fall on that with a little difficulty, and he fell on it very nicely, so I see no problems the rest of the rack. Oh, he undershot that a little. No, he's up. He's got a very casual gait around the table. Almost looks like he's on the practice table. That in itself can be very intimidating. Very slow and easy going good stride. Point. Very good point, because he does look like he's practicing. That's how loose he is. Elementary nine. Should see Stalab in front, 2-1 here. No danger with that one. The Russian star takes his first lead of this match. It's a round two clash, winner side match. 2-1, Stalab over Kiamko. Stalab comes to the table, 2-1 in front. Looking for a ball down here in rack four. And watch this powerful break. Well, he made the two ball, and he does have a powerful break, and he's not a real big man, so you don't need extra strength to hit him hard. If indeed that's what you need to do on this particular table, because sometimes hitting him hard is not as good as hitting him a little softer. You get a little better results sometimes. You know, I've been talking to a few of the players. It's been very damp here in Chesapeake this week and uh, you know these pockets are playing very difficult that's the general consensus of all the players is how tough these tables are playing and given that the dampness and as they become a little more used Danny that's going to make them play even tougher yeah there's an example of how tough they're playing that ball hung and looked like he hit it pretty well See, I, I play in Florida, and Florida is always damp. And up here right now, it's, it, it even had rain a little bit, and there's thunder and lightning out there. And the table, when it is wet, will play a little bit tougher. Nicely played off the cushion. Probably play the three in the corner here. It offers better position to the four. Right, good point, because you know, the people out there who really aren't adept at playing this game, sometimes you take a little tougher shot that brings you automatic position, and that's what he's doing here. He didn't make it look tough, of course. So many good Filipino players. And I like to keep repeating, it's amazing how they learn how to play the game. I, I try to do research. Who is the first player that they learn from? Because every great big city has a player that will develop young, good players. Who was it in the Philippines? Leaving a nice angle. Doesn't have to do too much with the cue ball. The eights over the bottom corners, you see, and nine. Pretty nicely positioned on yeah, the that, other corner. That is great position because anytime you only have to make the ball and you fall on the next ball, that is great position.
and never having to shoot a tough shot. For a 2-2 score line, Kiamko slots in the nine. And the first four racks here in the QTAQ arena have been halved. Two apiece, Evgeny Stalov and Warren Kiamko. Where can you find videos of the best players in the world, in their entirety and without commercials? AccuStats.com. How about 8-ball, 9-ball, straight pool, 1-pocket, and 3-cushion billiards? AccuStats.com. Only one place has it all. Check out our complete catalog on the net, 24 hours a day. Where do you ask? AccuStats.com. Jenny gets the rack together. Evgeny came to this tournament about eight years ago with his brother. Oh, Gabe Owen, winner of last year's U.S. Open. He got sudden fame from that. And all of a sudden, we knew Gabe had all the, the potential to be a great player. And getting that one U.S. Open under his belt has turned him into a bit of a monster. He's been a dominant player now. Well, again, no balls pocketed on the break, but the oncoming player is snookered, so now we're going to be executing some kind of push. Warren will have a luck where he wants to roll that cue ball. you got to have a plan. you got to have a plan when you roll this because uh, whatever you're thinking, your opponent is thinking, too, in most cases with good players. So you got to do something special or get the worst of it. This is a tough move. This is the one aspect of nine ball that you know you really have to you really have to have a good understanding, not only of your ability but your opponents. You can see that he's left a long, very difficult one into the top left corner. Fraught with danger this one. And I believe he was trying to change the, the position of the balls so when he gets the worst of it. He doesn't leave an easy layout, which you should always do. Yeah, I really can't see him taking this one on. There's no guarantee he's going to get position to the two. Unless he's playing the safe, which he may be doing. Good speed, good speed. He may have learned that from Efren. I don't think he can hit the ball. Yeah, full ball snooker here. And it looks like all Stalov can do is kick at this from that side cushion. Try and contact half of that one and put some distance between the two. Well, he's going to leave a shot, not a gimme. And, and the gimme part is the position part in case you make the one ball. You must fall on that two, and there are balls around it that could obstruct you. no problem whacking that in and the pocket took the ball even though it hit the rail and like I say all week later on that ball may not go with that same hit because the points of the rails wear out and you're hitting more close to the rubber and takes away a little cushion effect oh, well, that, that was a good shot <laughs> great shot if he doesn't go in the pocket or snooker himself Oh, he's all right. Just a smattering of applause, but when you've seen balls missed on these tables, they've been played at speed. A lot of these pockets have been playing very difficult. As you already said, it's going to get pretty tricky as the week wears on and this cloth becomes a little bit more used, especially if it stays damp, Danny. Oh, damp.
do you have a little theory about why the dampness hurts it? Well, I know on a snooker table, when the balls start to get that damp film on them, they tend to uh, to pick up a lot of the foreign obstacles, little little bits of chalk and dust and, and stuff that, you know, every time you, you strike the cue ball, a little bit of chalk filters down onto the cloth of the table, and as the cue ball, if it's a bit damp, it starts picking that stuff up. My studies, listen to what I have come up with, the wetness reduces the friction, and that makes the rubber push it fast. Oh, that's way too deep for me. Is it way, really? Way, too, way over my head. Yeah. I got grade six, Dan. Think about you it. Keep it so well. It's, it's, I don't want to. I want to be able to sleep tonight. That's the reason it's tougher to draw the ball when the table's wet. This is less friction, and therefore the cue ball doesn't come back so easily. Makes perfect sense. But right now, all Kianco cares about is seeing those nines hit the back of the pockets. Hey, want to play some pool in the most exciting pool league in America? Then join the BCA Pool League today. You can play eight ball or nine ball in singles, doubles, and team competition. You can even play in the world's largest amateur pool tournament held every year in May in Las Vegas. To find a BCA Pool League in your area, visit the BCA Pool League website at playbca.com or call toll-free 866-USA-POOL. Got the break in rack number nine. Both of them volleying racks back and forth. Warren Kiamko, 4-4 four, four with Stalin. Perfect cue ball this time. And I can't believe that That's one right. stayed on the table. It barely brushed the rail and didn't go in the pocket. But I've been watching this all week long. I say all week long. This is only the second day, but he's a little disgusted because you know he'd like to get ahead in this match instead of catching up all the time. Neither player just seems to want to run away with it. Well, they may want to, but the balls aren't letting them. Good opening shot there from Stalov. Got plenty of angle on this too. I don't know whether the three offers a combination with the four. Tough to tell where that four is positioned. Well, he's going to have it in the corner if he wants to shoot it that way. But now, how do you go from the three to the four? I mean, that's not an easy shot. Yeah, once the camera swings around like that, you, the three, four wasn't even in the thought process there. But this is the big shot, really, in this rack. Well, I like to say that. In every rack of nine ball, there's that one shot that if you pack it, you win that rack. And this is it, this rack. Well, if he makes it, he's going to have position. And he played the billiard. But he overcut the ball a little. He could have hit that ball fuller, and it would have been in a better position to pack it and still billiard the ball. But I don't imagine him having trouble with this. Just wants to be careful, though. There have been so many unforced errors already in this match. No problem there. Now he has to fall on the sick ball. And you want to fall on the sick ball with position so you can fall on the seven. That's where the in threes come in. Well, he either hit that too hard or too easy, but he does have a shot. Made it look easy, straight as can be. Those are not easy shots, especially under these kind of combat conditions. You no, know, the eight, perfect angle. Take the cue ball up closer to the nine. And surprise, surprise, Stalov will be one rack clear again. It was his turn. Yeah. 
That's been happening. Nine deposited. Evgeny Stalev, 5-4 in front of Warren Kiamko. Stalev settles himself to break in rack 10. Halfway through this match. Cue ball. Here we go again. Got to control that cue ball. I think he's a bit disgusted with that. That wasn't kicked in either, Danny. That went straight, straight into in, the corner that's pocket. What I say. And he uh, did uh, pocket two balls on the break. And had he not scratched, he may have run out and got ahead two games. But instead, he left his opponent a pretty easy layout. Well, he didn't want to exactly be there. That made it a little trickier. Three to the four now is, well, I think he can go two rails on the inside of the nine. And the ball is close enough to the pocket where he won't have trouble on the two rails. If you're going to go a little astray, do it when you got the next ball hanging. This roll of six to the side pocket should avail position to the seven. And probably will have the right angle to go from the seven to the eight. Just make the ball. Whatever you do, don't miss now. Well, what this match might be lacking in high-powered offense, it certainly is building up to be very dramatic because as they volley racks back and forth, they're getting closer to the finish line. And I've never seen a Hill Hill match that hasn't been exciting. Who doesn't like to see one rack to decide a winner and a loser? Oh, yeah. That's, well, I used to say that everybody loves it because both players are suffering. <laughs> and they get a kick out of that. Look at this. Camco lining up the nine. That would get him to 5-5. Five, five. Down it goes. And he will have the break in rack number 11, deadlocked here with Evgeny Stalin. Qtech state of the art power bonded cues have won more WPA sanctioned world championships than any other brand of cue. Discover why world champion superstars like Allison Fisher and Earl Strickland play exclusively with Qtech cues. Only Qtech power bonds fiberglass and graphite to a solid hardwood core to decrease deflection, add power, and prevent warping. And Qtech offers you patented improvements like 20 inch Pro Taper SST shafts and True Glide finish. Improve your game with 21st century technology at prices you can afford. Qtech imitated but never duplicated. Okay, I'm going to try to show you the reasons for a side rail break. Uh, most players, when they break from the side, are trying to accomplish two things. First, they're trying to make a ball on a break, and secondly, they're trying to get another shot. So, you can't do one without the other. So, what we're going to try to do is make the four ball in the corner pocket. The one ball will head toward this side pocket. Now, sometimes it'll go in the side, but most of the time, It'll come back out into this area right in here or even come down the table. But if you stop the cue ball in the middle of the table, more than likely you'll have a shot. The main thing is to make the four ball in the corner pocket. This is the side rail break. Now the one's headed straight for the corner pocket, so we're going to have a shot. So that was a successful break. Stop the cue ball in the middle of the table, made the corner ball. The one ball came down in front of the corner pocket, so we've got another shot. That's the purpose of the side rail break. I showed you an example of the side rail break. If 
something happens that this brake isn't working, try this side first, then come to this side and try that side. If that isn't working, then you come to here. You come between the middle of the table and the side rail. Just set your cue ball right in this area right here. What you try to do is you try to hit the one right on the nose. You try to hit as center on the one as you possibly can. And this is more like a, just a slam break. You try to control the cue ball, but you're not playing any, any particular ball. What you're trying to do is just give the balls a good roll and hope you make one and hope you get another shot. This is your secondary break. Okay, now this often happens. You'll make a ball on the break and then you'll have a tough shot on the next ball. We have a little bit of a shot. Not the best shot in the world, but you've accomplished something. You made a ball on the break and you're still at the table. can't make mental mistakes. Everybody that I ever saw misses balls. Don't make the mental mistakes, and that's what Tiempo has done a few times. Well, Stalov certainly has broken better than Kiamco of the two, little doubt there. I think we've only seen one break and clearance in this match. It was executed by Stalov. Rack number 12, and Stalov 6-5 in front to break off. Oh, nine down. How yep. about that one? Straight yep. into the side pocket. For the first time in this match, you've got a two rack advantage. Right. I wonder if Kiamco can feel the sense of urgency now. He's got to get a grip. And try to eliminate all those unforced errors that have crept into his game. And he's perfect on the floor. Right. When Jimmy said perfect, that means he has the angle where all he has to do is pocket the ball and he's going towards the five automatically. That's great position. And it wasn't an accident. He played that angle. Uh oh, don't get over the top of the eight. That would have been the only thing to go wrong. Draw this back, play the six to the same pocket. And that certainly had to be a good bit of medicine for an ailing Warren Kiamco to see that cue ball go straight into the side pocket and everything unfold like a flower for him in terms of the way the colors were sitting. Especially when your opponent made two balls. Uh, it's nice to start with ball in hand with everything open when you're behind two games. And now we're going to be back to one, I would believe. Johnny Archer-esque. The way he takes out a couple balls and just slides them into another pocket. So used to see an Archer do that. But Kiamko looks at this nine, deposits it, and gets back to 7-6. He'll have the break in rack 14. Looking to try and square things up here with Evgeny Stalov. Rack 14, here we go. Warren Kiamko, one rack behind Evgeny Stalov. One ball into the uh -oh. corner. Oh, same pocket. Oh, but he had better control. It's like you said earlier, he had better control of the cue ball and gravity. I'm going to steal your lines because I like that. They're there for the taking. Now, he doesn't have an easy shot, but the good thing about it is you figure to automatically go to the two ball if you make this. Tough shot, though, here. Going to draw and stay on the left-hand side of the table. Let's see, shooting the two. 
almost billiarded the nine in, and he got the right little tap on the six. Could very easily have been behind the six. Well, fortune favors the brave there, Danny. And that was a good shot on the two. Awkward cueing. And who would begrudge him position to the three? And now a golden opportunity for his first break and clearance of the match. What a timely effort this would be. And it would bring him back to tie. How's his speed? Decent. Decent. I like to be a little better here because uh, it's a pressure situation. He's going to soft draw this, I believe, and play the uh, six in the right hand pocket. Oh, it looks like he might be hitting the rail. And he's hitting the rail with the uh, object ball also. Oh, that's bad. You know, if Kamko should go on to lose this match, he's going to look back and probably remember about four or five shots where he had everything at his mercy and he just couldn't close the deal. Yeah, he really didn't have any difficulties there. I mean, Stalov, if he wins this rack, gets to 8-6 with the break. I mean, it's going to be a long way back for Kiamko because he's shown us nothing from which we can believe that he can pull this one out of the fire. Well, the thing about this is when Stalin wins this particular game, he needs to win the match three games and the opponent needs five. Nine down and Stella to eight, six in front now of Kianko with the break in rack 15. Here we go, Evgeny Stella. Rack number 15, eight, six in front. Uh oh, the no no again. And look at the nine. Very close to the bottom right corner, and that cue ball, boy, that side pocket for Stella has swallowed that white on numerous occasions. But he's doing it. Hit the, hit the head ball a little fuller, and the cue ball won't glance that way. Oh boy. This is destined to be a close match. That's all there is to it. But that is really a no-no, making that cue ball on the break so many times. Well, Warren shook his head. So obviously he didn't get the cue ball into the area that he wanted to, depositing that one. Oh, did he get a full pocket here and a full ball? He may have. He could have used a little more right-hand spin. The ball would have, I mean, he's perfect though. He's been in this position quite a few times. Dare we say it, but he should get out from here and Stalov, I'm sure, has already given him this rack. And in Stalov's mind, 8-7 is gonna be the score. It will soon be confirmed. Well, did he tell? He's got enough angle to get close to that seven. Right now, when it gets near the end of the match, with two games behind, you want to have all close shots. And that's what he's doing. I don't know how long Warren's been in America leading up to this U.S. Open. Well, we won't count Canada. You said you saw him two years ago in Canada. No, but I mean even coming over from the Philippines to play in this year's Open, whether or not he's fighting a bit of jet lag, or oh, certainly yeah. the time change. It is a factor, because I went to Tokyo, and, and the jet lag really exists, and I, you really need to go four or five uh, days ahead of time to get used to the different times. Absolutely. Kianto slots that nine in, eight, seven. He's got the break in rack 17, rack 16, sorry, and uh, try to pull things back to eight, eight.
You know, he was going in the side pocket if the ball didn't stop it. Just about made the nine, but look at the one nine that he's just left Stalin. Yeah. Oh, that's cruel. That nine just about dropped in. Oh, now Stala with a possibility of the one, even just flicking that seven, but it should, should avail him the nine. That's a hanger, that ball, right over the bottom right, right corner. He could hit rail first with the ball. I mean, uh, this is, looks like a godsend to, to leave right now while he's uh, suffering a little. Absolutely, no danger there whatsoever. That's twice that's happened to Warren Kiamko. Just when it looks like he was going to mount a bit of a comeback, the surge stopped in its tracks. And Stelov to nine, wanting two more for a place in round three. Nine seven, Evgeny Stelov over Warren Kiamko. Are you looking for the ultimate one stop shop for pool and billiard supplies? Then you need to visit billiardclub.net today for everything and anything you need for your home entertainment center. Our huge online store features pool cues, balls, racks, cue cases, pool table lights, training aids, and every accessory you could possibly imagine. We've got the best prices and the highest quality products you'll find anywhere. Log on today to billiardclub.net or call toll free 866-774-8770. Billiardclub.net. See if he slots the ball in on the break here. Rack number 18. He's hoping it's going to be the last one he plays today. Well, he hit it firm. He hit it solid on the nose. Didn't make a ball, though. Just about made the nine in the side to close things out. But as it is, Kiamko comes to the table with a great opportunity, certainly. Okay, how do you fall on the two? There's a lot of obstructions here. And he doesn't have an angle, so the only way he can go is backwards with the cue ball. And he has to think, oh, no, I was wrong. He could go forward, but he left himself a little bit of a long shot. But if he pockets it, he's got automatic position. He created an angle there by playing uh, the right side of the pocket. Well, I wonder if Kiamko is going to be, be able to pull out his best pull when he needs it the most because he can't afford any more hiccups now. You're going to have to dig, dig deep and find a little extra concentration, hit another gear in this one. Well, if he's going to go astray, it's going to have to be in the 7 to the 8 because I don't see any problems right here. A lot of the shots that Camco has missed, and even the way that he's played, it's almost been like there have been some lapses in concentration because he's far too good of a player. Let some of the opportunities that he's had Ooh. go astray. You know, he's sort of fortunate it didn't go in because he would have had a tricky shot on the seven, but now he's got easy position. He almost billiarded that ball in the pocket. He's got a little angle to go to Raz forward. goes and he's going to have a pretty easy shot on the eight in automatic position because he has a perfect angle where you just make the eight and you're going to the nine. And this will get Kiamko to 10-8. He's going to have to spring some racks together here and an ideal break would do that. 10-8 confirmed here from the Q-Tech Q Arena. The Chesapeake Conference Center, home, the 30th annual U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Kiamko and Evgeny Stalav. Well, the longest running tournament in history, and you're talking about if this and if that. He hasn't so far showed enough of the break to string racks with the break. He better do it now. Gathering his focus, probably trying to think of where he can go and what he can do to try and master, solve this mystery of the break. So far, it's eluded him. 
Rack 19 of a possible 21. Nine. Oh, my nine. A well, couple there. more of those. <laughs> One and nine straight well. into the top pocket. Just like that, 10-9. Yeah. I, I told you, this is destined to be Hill Hill. And, you know, he really had one coming because the lead made one on the break himself at a, a crucial moment. And now the crucial moment went the other way. Well, Evgeny kind of slumped back in his chair. He saw that nine coming towards the pocket that he sat nearest to. He had the best seat in the house as he saw that rack disappear before his very eyes. So here we go. That's not fun to watch your opponent make the nine on the break. Rack number 20, 10-9. Promised to be a close one, and it's lived up to all the advance billing. Kiamko to break. Well, he didn't make the cue ball, but he did make a ball. Stella would have loved to have seen that cue ball disappear the playing surface. Yeah, he made one ball on the break, but he doesn't have a gimme here. And when I say gimme, I mean an easy shot that brings you automatic position. He has none of that. He might have to play a safe. If you can't pocket this, he won't like it. And that's just what he did with pretty good control, but he left the shot. He left the hit anyway. I don't know if uh, Evgeny's going to play this uh, one-two combination, but he doesn't have to because if you cut the one exactly the way it's aiming at the two, the one won't go anywhere and the cue ball will. And that's what he did except he hit a ball. That's a no-no. You had to spin it by that ball and then he might have put him behind all these balls down here, the nine, the four. Meanwhile, that was a bad shot. Kiamko doesn't care. I mean, he, he don't feel sorry about it. Well, why should he? He's still got a ways to go. He's got to get through this rack to secure the break in rack number 21. But if Gimme if, if Gimme had better control, he would have been looking at a kick or something, and he got a shot instead. And after making that nine on the break, he should be loose here because he knows from nowhere he has a chance now. Tough layout. Oh, that was a great shot he played there. Yeah. Now the five doesn't look like it passes the seven to the same pocket that Warren's going to be eyeing up this four. What do you do here? What do you do here? Tough to get to the pockets that the ball passes in. Could he spin it enough to hit the ball? I think he's trying to do that. If he spins with right hand English, he hits that ball. And that's what he did, and he did it very nicely. But the ball really didn't pass anywhere, and he had to gamble on hitting it. And now it looks like if he pockets this ball, he's automatically on the six. This could get real exciting, Jimmy. I think it's going to be real exciting. I don't think it ever looked to be anything but. Even when Stalov was 10-7 ahead, you just had a funny feeling. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. He started to walk. He almost wanted to will that ball into the pocket instead of stroking it in. But we said at the outset, Danny, how difficult these tables were playing. Right. Look at that ball. It's like you can, a noise might knock it in. Oh, that's cruel. He did all the hard work in that rack, only to turn it over to Stalev. And it looks now like he's going to pay the ultimate price and have to fight his way back from the loser's bracket. And had he made that ball and ran out, he would have became instant favorite because Hill Hill with the break, he kind of like the breaker. Oh, F. Denny loved that ball hanging. And it really hung. I mean, it looked like it was almost more than half over the pocket. Stella with the easiest nine to secure the victory in this match. And down it goes. Yep, Jenny Stella, an 11-9 winner over Warren Kiemko. It had its anxious moments this match.
But in the end, Stella just fewer mistakes than his opponent, Warren Kiamko. Through to round three in the winner's bracket, Evgeny Stelev, 11-9 over Warren Kiamko. The U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship is a production of Billiard Club Network. For more, log on to billiardclub.net.